Hey guys, many of my long-term viewers may not realize this, but my mum was actually a psychologist. And as a result, I grew up in a house that largely valued psychology and a lot of lessons that could be taught by studying psychology. But myself, I developed my own love of psychology. And the first thing that I really fell in love with was personality testing. That is, how do we put together psychometric profiles to understand people's behaviors and maybe predict uh, how they're likely to behave in the future, maybe predict what they're going to be good at, what they're going to struggle at in life. Now, I find the whole process really amazing. And so it probably shouldn't be a surprise that, you know, when I started my company way back in 2009, coaching guys to be more successful with women, I know I needed to develop something um, to bring people into my website to get people to want to engage with me. And so one of the first things I built was a highly sophisticated personality test. And instead of giving the standard psychology answers in this test, I would give um, answers based on how what you're likely to struggle with and need to work on in your dating life. And it was really successful in in the sort of last 14, just over 14 years, I've had over 100,000 people complete the test. So I've got a whole bunch of data. Now this test, you can go ahead and check it out yourself as well. It takes some time, takes like 20 minutes to half an hour to complete, but it's based on what's called Raymond Cantel's 16 personality factor, which isn't to be mistaken or confused with Myers-Briggs, which is a complete sham of a personality test. Myers-Briggs 16 personality factor looks at very specific 16 different aspects to a person's personality. Now, many of you will probably be familiar with what's called the Big Five, which is a different type of personality test, or it's otherwise called Ocean. Um, now, it's called Ocean or Big Five because it, it talks about just five personality um, vectors. So those would be Ocean, right? Openness, conscientiousness, uh, extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. And to get from the, 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 the personality profile that I like, which is 16 of them, really what, what's done is they're kind of rolling different personality traits into each other. Where 16 personality factor may look at vigilance and uh, anxiety and a few other metrics, they'll roll them into one and just call it neuroticism. So it's it's more detailed, but it's also much more complex and it's too complex for most purposes. So they compiled it into five instead. Now, I use the 16 personality factor on my website. Why? Because I want to get as much detail on the kinds of guys that I'm working with as possible. And I just love data. Nerd! Okay, so why am I talking about this? I'm talking about this because today what I really want to talk to you about is your personality profile. Because there are a couple of personality uh, extremes that I see highly common in the guys that I work with. And they hurt guys in very specific ways. So what do I see? Because I want to talk about those and exactly how you can um, make up for them or improve or get better or have success with women in spite of having those uh, personality extremes. By the way, guys, if you like my videos in the past and you like where this one's heading, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I'm told that I need to start asking earlier in my video rather than right at the end as I usually do. Um, and it helps me out a ton, so that would be amazing. So what do I see as extremes? Three major things, okay? It is high in intelligence, so the guys who come to me are generally well above average in intelligence. Uh, then we have what we call agreeableness is extremely high, and neuroticism is extremely high. And I want to take a moment to speak about each of these, because it's important to really understand what you can do about these and why they're getting in your way, because you're probably going to recognize some of this as I talk about it. So first of all, intelligence. If you are high in intelligence, that's generally considered a good thing. I too am well above average in intelligence. Um, and so most people think that's a good thing societally, but here's the problem. Being high in intelligence means a couple of things. First of all, it means that we tend to rely heavily on logic and intellect to solve all of the problems that come our way. It means that we tend to overthink or think a lot about problems because of our intelligence. We have the ability to think of it from a lot of different angles. We have the ability to think of a lot of different scenarios and circumstances and things that may happen as a result of our actions. Now, this is generally quite a useful um, trait to have, and you may argue that it's not a personality trait, but when viewed under the micro microscope, of, if really think of intelligence, not just about your raw IQ score, but more about how much you value intellect, how much you value logic. And I see this as being extremely high in the guys that tend to come to me and myself as well. It is a fault for me. It's a fault because I 
have historically been very intolerant of people who cannot be very logical um, in a bad way. Like I don't give them space to, to express their feelings that they can't express their feelings in a logical way, which you can imagine is already a bit of a problem in communication. This is one of my flaws as a human being, and it may be one of yours too. But it's particularly difficult when it comes to learning to be more successful with women. Why? Well, first of all, you're used to solving your problems with logic and dating and relationships and connecting emotionally is not a logical problem to be solved. So you're used to being really good at stuff just because you're smart. And in this case, what a lot of guys who, who, who score high in this will see guys they see as being less logical, uh, perhaps less intelligent, but less logical, less, less thinking, they don't do as much thinking. And yet they seem to sometimes do better with women than they are. And that is very frustrating because again, they're used to solving their problems with logic. These guys, these idiot guys, I'm not actually talk, thinking they're idiots, but I'm talking about the emotional state. These idiot guys get all the success with girls uh, and they don't even understand the, 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 the concept properly. And yet they're still getting results. How is that fair? And this is probably something that you can relate to a little bit. Um, so what do we do about this when we have this really high well one of the things we need to do is we need to stop trying to solve the woman problem with logic we need to cut down on reading and consuming information because that's a problem there are too many uh dating coaches who are uh mutually incompatible their the ideas and their styles and the theories don't aren't compatible and you don't know how to reconcile those differences because you don't have the experience to do that and becomes very difficult and frustrating so you need to stop with the theory. You need to stop treating this like a math problem. And that might sound obvious or almost insulting, but it's really not meant to be. You need to, you will not have success with women until you're willing to start behaving in a way that are at times completely irrational and illogical. And this comes up when we come to teasing and banter, like being silly and goofy. Uh, it comes up even when we're trying to build rapport and connect with people. We need to stop trying to think. Overthinking is always the enemy in dating. Uh, and we need to start being almost silly uh, and stop taking ourselves so logic logically and stop taking ourselves so seriously and that helps an absolute ton with guys who score very high in this intelligence or logic loving quotient of your personality the second trait that i see a lot which i mentioned earlier was agreeableness and agreeableness is it's not talked about much in dating i think it's talked about a little bit in terms of like being too nice to people but the simple version of agreeableness is really someone who is highly agreeable um, is very good at putting the needs of others in front of their own. Or another way of saying it is they're extremely good at being empathic to the needs of others, so much so that the, the feelings they feel for others' needs are stronger than the feelings they feel for their own needs. This is generally considered a good social trait to have, right? If we talk about someone being agreeable or being easy to get along with, this is generally considered a good thing. Um, and often you'll hear people say, well, you know, nice guys finish last. And so maybe you're supposed to be completely unagreeable, but you need to remember that this is in fact a spectrum. You see at one end of the spectrum, you have someone who will never do anything nice to themselves and always just look after other people. At the other end, you've got complete selfish a-holes who don't give a damn about anyone else. Uh, neither is good. The difficulty is that if you are all the way on this end, you can still be successful, at least sexually, and you can be successful in business, and you can be successful in a number of areas. You will be lonely and not have a lot of friends, but you will have some success. If you're down on the agreeable end of the spectrum, it is hard to have respect with men or women. It is very, very difficult in dating. It's very, very difficult in business. I know a lot of people have tried to get into business and they're just too agreeable and they can't get any headway because they're not willing to be a little bit selfish. And so this is really the big thing. If you have this experience in dating where you are constantly nervous about asking a girl for her number or asking her home, or you're constantly aware of what she's feeling and not wanting to make her feel uncomfortable or not wanting to make her friends feel uncomfortable. If you've ever experienced approaching two girls in a bar or two women in a street and you feel bad about asking one of them for her phone number because you don't want to make her friend feel ugly because you didn't ask her for the number, you're probably very high in agreeableness. So you're not willing to disappoint people in your hunt for what you really want in life. And this is so critical. So of course, I'm not suggesting that you need to be an a-hole all the time. But what I am saying is that you need to start to be comfortable being a lot less agreeable. And that's going to be for life because ironically, we like people more, we respect people more who are more in, on, in the middle on the agreeableness factor. If people who are too agreeable often have trouble having long-term friendships. And the reason is that what happens is they give and they give and they give, and then they start to feel resentful for giving so much to the, the friends they have. 
and then they start to not commit so much to the friendships. So you part, you might notice this if you start if you're someone who feels like all of your friends take and take and take and never give, you're likely very high in agreeableness. And this is why people who are too agreeable struggle in friendships as well. So you need to start being less agreeable in your day-to-day -day life forever and something that you'll always be uncomfortable with slightly. But if you do that and you can be okay with that, that's when serious success and I think happiness in a lot of aspects of your life is really going to pick up. The third personality trait here is neuroticism. And if you haven't heard of neuroticism before as a personality trait, I'm going to put up a, a better definition here on the screen right now as I'm talking. But the simple version to those of you who just want to listen is essentially neuroticism is when events happen in your life, how dangerous or threatening or unsafe do you perceive the world around you to be on average? So in other words, uh, for example, if you're in a bar and a girl gives you an ambiguous look, like a half smile or something that you can't interpret, do you interpret that as being a positive thing or a negative thing, right? And that applies to a lot of things in life. If something is ambiguous, do you see the better or the worse on a on an average basis, right? So we're not just talking occasionally, because occasionally we all get the readings wrong when we see people doing things. But which way do you lean? So people who are neurotic tend to see the worst in the events that happen around them. This, unsurprisingly, causes trouble when it comes to dating and meeting women, because when you see it as being a threat, when you see all the things women do as being a threat or being negative or being a shutdown, it is very difficult to go through all the learning experiences that you need to have because you're, of course, going to have to have a lot of rejections along the way. So it is, it is completely wrong to say people high in neuroticism cannot do well in dating. I am high in neuroticism, quite high, in fact. I've dealt with tension and anxiety as a, as a, as a constant co-pilot in my life. If you've ever read the book, The Game, um, it's a fun read, but you know that the main protagonist there, a style and mystery, were both famously neurotics. Uh, Elon Musk is neurotic. So it is possible it's successful in business. It's possible it'd be successful with women. But before you, you're going to be able to go through that journey, you need to have your neuroticism managed. And that's going to mean things like meditation, yoga, um, breathing exercises, uh, maybe psychologist sessions. Uh, it's going to mean things like um, basically learning a lot of really high quality psychological self-care. Because if the neuroticism easily gets the better of you, you're never going to make it through that journey. And it's something that I see quite a lot with guys. It's something that I had to come to terms with in my own life. You heard me talk about my doing men's work and a lot of self-development and tantra events and all these things to, to understand myself and be able to manage my emotional state. Because it's harder for anyone who's high in neuroticism and I understand that. Now, something that might be a surprise to you guys, I'm sure some of you have been like typing it out already, is listening to my video, why didn't I talk about introversion and extroversion? Because after all, ocean, extroversion, introversion is the opposite of that, it's a spectrum, so it's part of that same metric. Why am I not talking about introverts? Surely introverts are overrepresented in my clients. Haven't I talked about that in the past? Um, yes, and kind of. Um, the difficulty is this. If you just do an ocean test, look at the five big ones, you'll most of my clients are going to be introverted. But when I look at 16 personality factor, which is a more fine grained way to look at personality profiling, I see a lot more shyness and things like this being the problem rather than pure introversion. And you need to remember that introversion is um, actually where being around people takes energy and tires you out. Okay. It's nothing more or less than that. If you are, uh, if you are neurotic and introverted, that becomes a problem, right? But it's not the introversion that's creating the problem. Now, why is that a problem? It's a problem because, look, introverts from a very young age spend less time socializing on the whole. Um, I, I, I'm an interesting example. My mom was a public was, was a psychologist, but she worked as a public speaking instructor for a lot of my life. So I got an interesting upbringing as someone who's an introvert talking in front of crowds, talking to lots of people. So I got an education that most introverts didn't get. But if you, most introverts get this, they, they, they get raised not to be as heavily socialized as their extrovert counterparts. So it's easy for them to end up being lacking social skills or being, as a result, being shy, right, around social situations because they don't have the experiences that their extroverted counterparts do have. So this is more of a secondary effect of introversion rather than a primary effect. When I get clients who are introverted, I never have to work on their introversion. I don't need to say, be less introverted. Um, and in fact, that wouldn't work anyway, because introversion is one of those personality traits we just can't seem to budge through training, whereas all the others seem somewhat malleable, not perfectly, but somewhat, 
introversion, extroversion really doesn't change, but I don't need to. It's not necessary. I need to get them to deal with their shyness or their social skills, blah, 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 or work on their neuroticism, but they never need to work on their introversion. And I think that's something that's very interesting to, to, to kind of, I guess, round out this video is it's very easy to blame neuroticism, uh, introversion on the problem, but actually it's usually one of the other things that I've mentioned almost always. And so it is important to understand what are those elements of our personalities that are holding us back. I know that some of you are aware, but some of you aren't, that I do coaching with guys exclusively on these areas, right? Especially if you're struggling with neuroticism, especially if you're struggling with being too agreeable. These are two areas of great passion of mine because I had to go through this journey as well. I do coaching one-on-one -on, -one on Zoom. I'll put a link down below. But if that's something you'd like to work with me personally on, it's something that I, yeah, I've been doing for goodness, well over a decade. So I, I've got a lot of experience helping guys through this journey. I'd love to work with you if you're, yeah, looking for some external help. As always, guys, I hope you've loved this video. Please give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel because that helps me a ton. And I look forward to seeing you guys in my future videos.